enhancing our communication infrastructure, opening a door to communication and mutual understanding, creating opportunities to express ourselves and our values. Livermore has a robust public art program because we believe that art can inspire and bring together the community. Art can also be a powerful economic development tool. I would like to acknowledge several of our council members in attendance. Thank you for being here, as well as several commissioners. And with that, I'm going to open the floor to our Vice Mayor Gina Banano for additional opening remarks. Thank you, Vice Thank you, Mariana. Hi, everybody. How's everybody doing today on this beautiful Livermore day? Does it get much better than this? What are we, the 12th of October? This is why we live here. One of the reasons we live here, not the only reason. Public art, public art and the appreciation for the arts is another reason we live here. So I'm really pleased to be able to participate in uh, this dedication today. I was here yesterday at the Springtown Library for the Quest event, which was an awesome event related to the more Pride Month. And I got a chance to just look at this beautiful sculpture for a few minutes with very few people around and really got my first look at it. And I, I just think it's a stunning sculpture. I'm so pleased that it's here right next to the Springtown Library, which um, is getting a facelift in a lot of ways. I think this is just going to be a, a, a more and more important part of our community, and I just love that, that the sculpture is going to be probably climbed on by kids and uh, appreciated by adults. Lots of cool family photos are going to be taken from this sculpture. Um, so I just think one of the things that I notice, I travel a lot and I try to pay attention to public art, you know, in different cities I visit, both, both in the U.S. And, and internationally, and I really appreciate seeing all this art in the community and, and really understanding what it means to a community and it, it gives you a reflection of how important art is to a community. And when I come back here, I always feel so proud about all the art I see in our community. And I, it always makes me, I appreciate other, other pieces of art that I see that reflect their culture, but when I come back here, I say this is a community that, that has a great and deep and long-standing appreciation for the arts, cultural arts of all, of all sorts. So I'm very proud of my city for that. You know, we used to brag about the fact that we have two national laboratories and we have more PhDs per capita than any other city in the country. I actually think because of the artistic influence and all the artists we have in this community, we probably have a larger per capita artist community uh, than even PhDs. So I think that it shows the appreciation we, we have for art. Um, I'm going to acknowledge, I think I appreciate uh, Mariana acknowledging Councilman Carly and Monroe. We have director of the library, Emily Baker. Former Mayor John Marchand. Um, I'll get to the commissioners in just a moment. Um, the, the one thing I wanted to add is it's, it's not, it, it's not, uh, it is easy to sometimes take for granted this beautiful community we have and all the public art pieces that we do have. So I think one way to sort of appreciate it is to imagine the absence of it. We have these pieces that have been in the community for decades. Like at Civic Center, we've had the Peace Monument since the 80s, I believe. And I just think, what would it be like if we went to the Civic Center and we didn't see the Peace Monument? What would it be like in a few years when we didn't see this beautiful influx sculpture? So appreciating it when you imagine our city without art um, is one way to sort of reinforce that. So with that, I'm going to just thank our city staff, as always, for all the great work they do. Um, Director of uh, Economic Development, Brandon Cardwell, is here somewhere. Let's see him. him. Um, I want to thank the commissioners, um, the Arts Commission, who do such great work. Um, I'll list them by name. If I get some of your names uh, incorrectly pronounced, my apologies. Bob Gaussman, who I know from way back, commanding the camera. Sabrina Onimus. Uh, Cher Willard, of course. Elizabeth Porter. Glenn Kaminsky. Kathleen De Ornelis. If I got that incorrectly, I apologize. And of course, Monty Lane, who's been a stalwart of this Arts Commission for so long. So with that, I'm going to uh, introduce uh, Cher Willard, the Chair of the Commission for the Arts, and Elizabeth McWhorter, Vice Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, looks like Liz has been detained. I just want, want to clarify one thing, actually. Um, Sabrina is our fearless leader on the Commission. I did serve with her and with Liz on this we call ad hoc committee for sculptures and we had two missions really when we started this year with this subcommittee 
uh, one of the one of the missions uh, was to decide what kind of sculpture we wanted and uh, and and to put out the call for artists and uh, and and go through the process of choosing a piece of art that would be appropriate for our community. The other this time that was different was that we had a mission to expand our reach. So the last number of years, uh, the Commission for the Arts has been very focused on the downtown. And as you know, a few years back, we put in, um, or we facilitated the city putting in four wonderful sculptures in the downtown. We also have put in some sculptures in the sculpture garden uh, outside of um, City Hall. And, um, and, and that's really been our focus, and, and it's appropriate because the downtown and the city government centers, those are like the communal property of the community. But then each neighborhood is important as well. And so Sabrina actually was the one who said, we need to make a plan to extend art into other parts of our community. And so we did. We made such a plan. And our very first decision was to put a, a piece of sculpture in Springtown, which we felt um, had been somewhat neglected in that direction. And since there's this great opportunity uh, to turn this space into a wonderful, usable, excuse me, walking trails uh, and um, other facilities uh, that, that LARPD is going to um, develop for the community. And of course, we have our, uh, our second library right here and with plans to, as, as was mentioned, plans to um, um, beautify it and enrich it and perhaps at some point expand it. We thought that this would be a perfect location. We went through, we put out the call for art, we went through dozens and dozens and dozens of wonderful art from all over the country and in public cases outside of the country. Um, these people have just such wonderful imaginations when it comes to this sort of thing. And we went through all of them. It was, it was really difficult to choose. But at the end, we decided uh, this was the perfect piece. It's of a size to command attention, even from the street, across the street, from across the hill, if you're taking a walk. It's bright colors to be uh, joyful and to, um, to attract the attention of children without being um, a place that they might want to climb and hurt themselves or <laughs> graffiti or whatever. So uh, we thought that this was, was great for those reasons. And also, it's just pretty. It's just aesthetically pleasing. And, um, and so I hope that you and all of our community really enjoys this and uh, knows that we will be looking to spread art throughout the rest of the community in the coming years. And I see that Liz has just arrived. Would you come on up here, Liz? Liz is actually a Springtown resident. Hello. Good to see you all. I'm in Greenville North, which is Springtown adjacent, but um, yeah, this is my backyard. So um, I'm thrilled that this is here now and that we can drive by it and I get to point it out to my kids and I say, Mommy helped make this happen. Um, it adds a beautiful pop of color over here and an otherwise um, brown and green area here. Um, and it really connects to um, the first kind of relationship we had with Springtown was actually exploring the green belt over here. Uh, we did a creek cleanup, my kids and I and my husband, and um, we've ridden our bikes and walked and run around at the water body over here that not everybody knows about actually. Um, so it's so fun to explore that you have to kind of go through this little bike path um, like through a neighborhood. So I feel like that's even another hidden gem not everyone realizes it's there yet. So when I was going through the applications and I saw this, um, it really made me think of, oh, that connection to the water and the natural elements that we have here. Um, so um, it's just a real pleasure and I am excited that we get to help um, make this area less of an art desert, let's say. Um, I know we've got some nice bus murals here uh, with murals on them, uh, but it would be great to see more of this and we're working on a utility box mural project as well, so we'll um, see some more of that here soon. Um, 
Um, again, thanks so much for being here today, everyone. And uh, it's my pleasure to be a part of this and to serve with um, Commissioner Mollard and Commissioner Animus on this uh, committee. Cheers. Okay, I think I come back and present the certificate. Oh, sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. No, no worries. I'm going to let you do that, Brandon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm Brandon Cardwell, Director of Innovation and Economic Development, and I have the pleasure of being the staff liaison for the Arts Commission, which just does phenomenal work to help beautify the community and create access to programming um, that enriches the entire community. So next up, as part of our program, we have our uh, newly minted poet laureate, um, Peggy Schimmelman, who's going to come and read a poem written for the occasion. As a river flows into the ocean, it leaves behind those species unable to survive the transition. But the more adaptable persist, riding the current on into the sea, enriching the deep, briny water with an influx of diverse new life. And just as a river longs for the ocean, so do humans search for a home, a place to plant roots, form friendships and families, a place to prosper and thrive. Some seek out populous cities, energized by bustling crowds, while others reap peace in the fields of the heartland, remote mountain villages, or the mystic solitude of the desert. But some found a home in this valley, in a town that sprang from a cattle man's dream, a city rich in Western tradition, but with an artistic yet scientific vibrant spirit, with a vision fed by a humming city center, ranches and vineyards, unique neighborhoods, growing, flowing, merging into one diverse community, an ocean of promise, a place where we all can belong. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think at this point I'm going to um, ask the chair and vice chair of the World Commission to come up. Um, unfortunately, the artist, Cecilia Teresa, is not here today, but we are going to present the certificate uh, to the, the chair and vice chair, and we will get it to the artist. And we're going to make sure she knows how much we love her for work and how much we appreciate her having been made for a moment. Oh. Oh. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. Right here. Can you get the sculpture in the background? I do. All right. We'll back it up a little bit. All right. There we go. All right. All right. All right. Back. That concludes the formal program. We really appreciate you all coming out um, for the first of all. We hope to do many additional art installations throughout this community. We have some refreshments back behind. Please stay, mingle, have a cookie, have some water, and uh, admire the beautiful statue. Thanks again.